Where I'm going I don't know, hope it's warm and sunny, hope there's lots of money and lots of friends, rains all night, spuns all day, everybody likes to play. This uh, review of cameras uh, isn't intended to point you to any specific camera or uh, brand of camera, it's really just a review of cameras that I have found useful for vlogging and uh, should be taken in that spirit. They're all good. Um, I don't have to own any Canons but my friend uh, Gordon has uh, some uh, and he says they're really good. He, uh, he always gives me a little bit of a horse laugh for the cameras I have. Uh, the other thing is my point of view is just one point of view. Uh, I have been following a vlog by uh, Casey Neistat to some extent and he's done some camera reviews for vlogging cameras and he has a different point of view from me and maybe you'd like to look at some of his. Look around and oh the other thing I wanted to talk about cameras like other technology today change constantly so uh, you might find that the camera you bought this month Next month you can see something that is a lot more featured and cheaper and, you know, that's the way the world is today. So you're probably not just going to own one camera if you're a serious vlogger. You're probably going to get a camera every year or so and you're going to have a collection of them. So just have fun. That's the thing. Get out there and shoot. Use whatever you've got. And uh, to that part of this vlog discussion, I'm going to talk about another little camera that I have uh, that you might be interested in. This is a little Fuji point and shoot. A very inexpensive camera. I don't even know that I paid a hundred dollars for this. It doesn't have much of a zoom on it. I, don't know, I think it's four or five by. I'm not really sure which. but. Uh, takes an okay picture and if you're um, if you're not a rich person and you want to vlog well start with something like this and if you look around you can probably get even better deals than the one I had so I'm taking this selfie with a little inexpensive Fuji point and shoot a camera that you can probably get for under my $100. favorite vlogging cameras is a point and shoot this one happens to be a Sony and it's got a long zoom and uh, the only thing uh, that uh, it wasn't a cheap camera either but the shutter for the uh, to cover the lens the lens cover uh, gave out about uh, after I'd used it pretty much daily for six months and it doesn't open properly now I have to use my fingers to open it pro properly and of course that exposes the lens to uh, oils and whatever that happens to be on my fingers and that's not a good thing um, and hard to see the screen when I'm shooting outdoors in bright sun and no viewfinder so those are all factors to consider the big benefit is it goes right in your pocket and uh, I'm a firm believer that the uh, best camera is the one you have with you because if something's happening and you got a shiny bright camera sitting in a camera bag somewhere and it might be a beautiful camera you might have paid uh, twenty thousand dollars for it whatever if you haven't got it with you it's of no use to you an old standby is the cell phone you always have one in your pocket and I'm using a Samsung and it seems to have a pretty good image and a decent microphone. Always handy. The uh, camera I'm going to use on my walk today is this uh, Fujifilm and the reason I have chosen to take this one is it because it does have a, a viewfinder it's because it's bright sun out and can't see the screen too well. Uh, the disadvantages of this for vlogging are it's a little bit bulky and the main disadvantage when it comes to video is that it uh, has 
uh, a poor microphone, I would say. Well, it records at very low volume at any rate. However, I can adjust the volume in my editing program, and uh, I hope it will come out satisfactorily. We'll see when I get back. It's got a long zoom, 24 by, and has uh, some good features, but it's just a bit bulky for vlogging. I have my Fuji mounted on a monopod today, and that's because I want to make sure I keep my hands away from the camera. It's an older design camera, and uh, perhaps they didn't have selfies in mind. I don't know. I just want to make sure I don't plug up the uh, microphone uh, input holes uh, with my hands taking, you know, holding it in the wrong place just in case that's a factor in what's uh, creating the, the low level of sound coming from the mic. Well, I did get a little surprise with this camera um, in the bright sun, which we are experiencing right now. I'm actually able to see the view screen uh, not too badly. Now, I do have uh, transition glasses on that go dark in the bright sun so I don't know how that's going to affect me I may have to take them off I so far haven't had to use the viewfinder but it doesn't matter whatever way I can see what I'm shooting that's what counts and uh, I'll just check it out for a selfie uh, in the same shot that way I can see how that affects the microphone level taken from both the back and then sound coming from back and front. So uh, that'll be interesting. I'll be looking forward to, to seeing how that works out. This camera does have a long zoom and I'm not going to demonstrate that now because it doesn't really fit with this shot but I'm, uh, it's handy sometimes to have a long zoom camera. That's why my point and shoot also is a long zoom camera. Sometimes you want to get right in on the subject and it's a distance away. The selfie I just took, I had this sun at my back. Now I'm walking the opposite way on the street and the sun is in my face, so we'll see what difference that makes to the selfie. It should, uh, I should be getting a much better image going this way because uh, when the subject is backlit, some, usually you have to adjust for it in the editing process to, uh, so then you end up with a background that's too light, but you get the, the faces at the right exposure. If you're lucky, it's not always that easy. So I'm having fun getting used to this camera. I've had it for quite a while. I haven't been using it that much, but I'd like to use it more because it is handy. It has a lot of features. I have a better camera. I have a couple of better cameras actually that um, are bigger and bulkier, and that's not always convenient. So uh, is this a compromise? I don't know. You look a bit like a geek walking down the street holding a, a camera on a monopod and pointing it at yourself and pointing it down the street. It, uh, but then that's vlogging. I'm at the drugstore. Sharon is quite ill and she's asked me to pick her up some decongestant and a neck brace. So I'm here to check it out. Well, I think the springtime is one of the best seasons of the year. It's uh, warm enough to walk around in shirt sleeves and enjoy the bright sun, long days, <coughs> and uh, just generally be about right. Summer gets here and it gets to be a little too hot. Then you get the fall, and I think fall is another excellent season. I like spring and fall. They're the slightly more moderate. Well, in this climate that I live in, we don't get a lot of moisture, so uh, we don't have a real rainy season. And uh, every month has just about the same amount of uh, precipitation right through the year. Uh, total rainfall is 12 inches. 
and I guess that's, uh, what is that, 25, 30, 30 centimeters, yeah. Um, anyhow, great day for a walk. So my conclusion for cameras is, first of all, the best camera is the one you've got. And second of all, for vlogging, I think it should be compact and portable. Uh, benefits would be a long zoom uh, and a viewfinder, or at least a screen that you can see in the bright sun. So those are all things to take into consideration. So all I could say is, happy vlogging! Well, that's my vlog for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like my videos, please share, and if you're new to my videos, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Go to fredspencermovies.com.